This presentation explains the process of plastic extrusion. It was written and produced by New Jersey Precision Technologies. Plastic extrusion is a manufacturing method that involves forcing heated plastic through an opening in a die which deforms and reshapes it into a desired profile. The material that passes through the die is known as an extruded. This process is used in manufacturing pipes, tubes, films, profile shapes like U-channels, and other shapes for many different industries. There are different types of plastic extrusion depending on the type of application or desired final product. They are sheet film extrusion to manufacture films or sheets, blown film extrusion to create plastic bags, over jacketing extrusion to manufacture insulation of wires, tubing extrusion to create pipes, tubes, or hollow cylinders, profile extrusion to create uniquely shaped products like railings, co-extrusion where there is more than one polymer in the final extrudent, and extrusion coating when a polymer is required for coating other products. An extruder is the machine that is used for the extrusion manufacturing process. It consists of three main zones, the feed zone, melting zone, and melt pumping zone. The feed zone is where the polymer is introduced through a hopper into the barrel. The channel depth in the feed zone is constant. The rate of polymer feed will depend on gravity, the weight, and density of the polymer. The melting zone is where the polymer undergoes melting due to high pressure and temperature. The rotating screw shears the polymer against the barrel wall, which causes heat generation. There is also additional barrel heaters that provide the extra heat necessary to melt the polymer in case it's required. In the melting pumping zone, the rotation of the screw creates a drag flow due to its flights, which in turn creates a positive flow of the polymer through the die. The polymer goes through a filter screen and a breaker plate, which will remove any contaminants from the melt and also distributes the polymer evenly through the die. Generally, in a plastic extrusion process, the plastic pellets that have been blended with the necessary additives are introduced into the extruder through a hopper. The plastic enters the barrel in which it begins to melt due to the viscous heat generation and friction. The screw inside the extruder imparts a positive motion using its flights and the molten plastic is forced through the die opening. The molten plastic is shaped and formed into the desired profile. The newly shaped plastic extruded is passed through a cooling bath where it gets cooled uniformly and solidifies to the final shape. After solidification, the extruded passes through a pull roller which is responsible for providing a uniform pull pressure on the extruded as well as smoothening the plastic. Finally, the extruded is cut into its desired dimensions and sent for quality inspection. Cooling plays a very important role in forming the final shape of the extruded. After exiting the die, the semi-solid extruded is cooled to a temperature below its melting point with the help of either a gas, a liquid, or through contact by a metal surface. Air cooling is performed when an inexpensive method is desired as it does not require any special tooling. However, the extrusion process has to be running at a really slow speed. Simple clamps and bent wire can be used to hold the extruded to maintain its correct shape. Water cooling requires a constant supply of cold water, which is usually recirculated. The water will be flooded over the product so as to ensure uniform cooling. This method is very efficient, but it is comparatively more expensive as it requires special tooling. In the case of hollow geometries, Compressed air is passed through the extrudent to provide an internal pressure which will force the extrudent against the walls which results in it forming the desired shape. In the case of vacuum calibrators, a vacuum pump will be used to absorb heat through a perforated sleeve inside which the extrudent passes. The entire process is done inside a tank which encloses the flow of the extrudent. The cooling can be either wet dry, or done through calibrator contact. 
The extrudit coming out of the extruder obtains its required geometrical shape with the help of extrusion dies. The dies are responsible for distributing the incoming polymer melt into a uniform flow as well as shaping the extrudit as it flows through the die, taking into consideration all of the post-extrusion effects that can adversely affect the final shape. Therefore, they have to be very carefully designed and manufactured, which usually is a highly cumbersome approach that involves trial and error. However, the engineers at New Jersey Precision Technologies have amassed enough experience and with their access to professional tools, near-perfect extrusion dies can be designed and manufactured. Extrusion die assembly can have a single plate to unlimited depending on the application of the extruded product and the extruded material. Generally, the assembly will consist of an adapter plate, single or multiple transition plates, and a die plate. The adapter plate lies closest to the extruder and the final extruded with the desired geometry will come out of the die plate. The adapter plate is the first set of extrusion die plates, always being a round shape. It is found near the extruder outlet. This plate has the counter bore on one side to allow space for a breaker plate to sit in. The adapter helps in supporting the flow of the polymer into the transition plates. The transition plate can either be round or rectangular, depending on the geometry of the profile. There can be a single transition plate or multiple plates to allow the polymer melt to flow from the adapter plate into the die plates. The inlet profile of the transition plates can be found to have features called ribs, which help improve the flow of polymer into its desired form. At New Jersey Precision Technologies, the internal profiles for each plate is manufactured using the wire EDM process. In cases where hollow profiles have to be extruded, we make the use of a spider plate. This plate consists of a mandrel located on the exit side and a bullet at the inlet side which are responsible for imparting the hollow profile as it forms the polymer melt to flow around it. The bullet and mandrel can either be integrated or removable. Die plate is the most important plate since it has the responsibility of accounting for the undesirable post-extrusion phenomenon and forming the polymer melt into its final desired geometry. The exit geometry of this plate will have the adjustments to its profile wall thickness, drawdown adjustments amongst many others. A lead-in feature can usually be found at the entrance of the die plate, which improves flow of the polymer from the transition plate to into the die plate. Extruder throughput can be determined using equation one, plastic output equals drag flow minus pressure flow minus leakage flow. Drag flow is generated by the rotating screw inside the barrel. The velocity profile de developed has a parabolic shape with maximum velocity at the barrel wall and zero velocity at the screw root. The throughput due to drag flow can be calculated using equation two. Pressure flow throughput is due to the die packing. It also depends on the viscosity of the polymer and is calculated using equation three. Finally, the leakage flow is the possibility of leakage over the screw flight in cases where there is a high clearance between the screw flight and the barrel. This usually happens when the screw has worn out due to long periods of use. Hence, this value can be neglected in the majority of cases. Substituting these equations into equation one, we get the equation for the total plastic extruder throughput as equation four. Here we have assumed that leakage flow is really small and hence can be neglected. This equation can be further derived into two extreme cases, where back pressure equals zero, which is conditioned for ideal maximum extruder throughput. Equation five can be derived by substituting P equals zero in equation four. Where back pressure is maximum, this means there is no output from the extruder. Equation six can be derived by substituting Q equals zero in equation four. Polymers fall under a category of fluids known as non-Newtonian fluids. These fluids change their viscosity or flow behavior under application of stress. Their viscosity is determined with the help of power or law as seen in equation seven. Table one shows the power law index values for common polymers that are used in extrusion. 
The shear rate that the polymer will undergo inside the extrusion die will depend on the geometry of the channel. Table 2 shows the shear rates and how to calculate them for common geometric channels. The throughput from an extruder die is directly proportional to the inlet pressure and can be written numerically as equation 8. Here, K is proportionally constant that depends on the geometry of the die channel. B stands for the greatest dimension of the profile, D stands for the dimension of the profile, and F is a flow coefficient that is calculated based on the D over B ratio. Equation 8 can be used to plot characteristic curves between throughput and inlet pressure. The interaction of these curves gives us the operating point. The extruder throughput at the operating point can be derived by substituting equation 4 into equation 9. We can derive the formula to determine the operating inlet pressure required for the die to attain operating throughput. After applying the general conditions for the Davis standard extruder, we can derive equation 10 into equation 11. We can now perform a case study to determine the output flow rate at the operating point of a given die profile. The extruded is rigid PVC and the extruder using a general purpose Davis standard extruder. We first determine the maximum possible throughput through the extruder using equation 5. Next, we divide the profile into elemental sections that have basic profile shapes that represent a slit, an analysis, triangular or radial profiles. Considering each elemental section individually, we find the shear rate inside the channel and the viscosity of the rigid PVC passing through it. In this case, we considered elemental section one. Once we have calculated the viscosity of rigid PVC passing through elemental section one, we can determine the operating inlet pressure through the elemental section one channel. Next, using equation 8, we can determine the output flow rate through the elemental section 1 of the die. Similarly, the output flow rate can be calculated for all the elemental sections that the profile was divided into, and an average of all the flow rates will give us a throughput through the profile extrusion die. In summary, the actual extruder output may differ from the theoretical calculations due to changing pressure, temperature, and shear rate errors. Increasing the channel depth of the screw results in higher pressure flow, lowering the throughput. Large die openings with low throughput have low die pressure and vice versa. Screw design and RPM determine the shear rate. Higher viscosity resins generate more viscous heat, increasing melt temperature. And to achieve optimum throughput, the extruder must be operated with the correct RPM, zone temperatures, screw geometry, and an effective die design to match the polymer being extruded.